Today's video is going to be about a little trick that uh, I've developed in being able to clean off the top of my toppers, not only for pine cones and needles, but also more importantly for snow. In the past, that was the biggest uh, issue for us. Once you come to this side, Sue, when we were in Atlanta one time, we got snowed on without us actually knowing it. Uh, it happened during the night, kind of caught us by surprise, and we were getting this slide repaired. And so last minute, we wake up, we got snow on the top there, and I've got to shut this thing. Well, you'll notice that this slide actually, this slide topper has actually been replaced once already. We actually have a video that shows how that was done uh, back when we were in Florida. But I sort of damaged it in the process of bringing it in because no matter how good you clean it, even if you're up there with a broom and you get the thing perfectly clean, because it's cold now and wet, it just did not roll up good. So now the last couple times we got snowed on, and trust me, we make sure that that doesn't happen often. But the few times that we have been snowed on, we, uh, if we catch it early enough, we'll shut the slides and we'll just go through the night all compacted. Uh, we actually have some video footage from when we uh, kind of didn't catch it right and that is actually the first time I used the blower and I'll include that in the video. Why don't you come over here? deciding what blower to buy, I almost fell into the trap of buying a super expensive battery powered one. And I didn't fall into that trap because I wasn't sure how much I would use a blower. If I could do it over again and if I could get the right form factor, I can tell you I absolutely positively would have bought the $350 battery one because every time you use it, if you got a string of cord, that's one extra step of screwing around. But having said that, the blower I'm going to show you, I only paid 39 bucks for, thing works awesome. And it's kind of got me on the program where I really uh, think that it's a useful thing. So if you got the jack and you can uh, buy the battery powered one the first time, you probably will use it quite a bit and you'll be able to keep the batteries healthy because you'll be able to keep it charged all the time. Now, when I bought this, the one reason why I bought this one was I wanted a form factor that was like a stick so that I could stab it into the bay that I was going to store it in. We don't have a mat that we put out like 99% of the people that eventually will want to blow that mat off before they roll it up. So maybe I would have been smarter and know uh, I would have need, needed this sooner. I actually had to wait until I had issues where I had to get on a ladder and then I'm up there, you know, blowing like this on a ladder. I got, you know, rubber shoes on, it's snowing and sleeting. Not particularly uh, a safe setup. Why don't you come over here, uh, Sue? I can show you the ladder that we use. We really like this ladder. Uh, it stores super easy here. I'll put a link down in the description uh, on the extend and climb ladder. I would be disingenuous if I told you that I like that ladder as much as the one we had before. The one we had before was a little giant ladder and it's an A-frame <clears throat> and it was a very long tall A-frame ladder very useful, super stable. The problem was is I had to store that on the back of my uh, rig. For a while we had it in here but because of our bikes and everything it was just getting to be a little bit too much trouble to have it in here. When we hung it on the back what I found was it was impeding me from checking my engine, checking my oil, you know looking for uh, squirrel nests and things in there. I would go back there, I'd see the ladder, and I'd go, eh, maybe some other day, you know, because I'm too lazy. So after a while, I stopped carrying that, started at my son's again, 
and we've gotten this ladder. If you're big enough, strong enough, and patient enough to use the Little Giant style or Costco style A-frame ladder, much safer, much better, but nonetheless, this is the second best. I'm going to show you what not to invent. Now, there was a time where Sue and I, when we first started, we loved this broom. And this broom would fold and extend, it would go flat, and we would sweep the rig out. We got about six months out of this thing. It's the typical Tetford or Thedford product, or might even be Campco, but I'm kind of thinking it's Thedford. And it broke. We thought, well, that's a fluke, so we ended up buying another one. Well, we articulated that down, and we're sweeping for our slides before we bring our slides on, and that one broke. So we stopped using these. We took it out of our Amazon store. This is a piece of junk. We don't recommend it. But it's so cool looking that I saved it for a while. And what I did was I put some um, tie wraps here and I tied it so that it wouldn't uh, fold up on me. And I thought I was pretty clever. And I ended up buying an attachment like this. And everybody, everybody really ends up carrying holes like this if you're gonna do any washing of your rig. So it didn't take much imagination to see that if I took the pole that I was carrying anyways and I wound it on here and you, you can see that it was righty tighty lefty loosey and then I would put this here at 90 degrees the trouble with this was is I could only push snow one way because it would self unravel itself so I'm showing you this because I don't necessarily recommend it anymore I used this for a while until I ended up getting the blower I save it still Sometimes if there's a quick uh, brush off of needles or something that I want to get, if I know it's going to be light, it actually is a lot more impressive on this side. That's a very shallow stroke to get. If you go over here, you can see that I can reach Pretty much, if I take a little bit less grip up there, I can reach all the way to the end of this thing, okay? Since I built it, I keep it. Since I got this attachment, I keep it. But I can tell you that I'm anticipating the blower to work a lot better. Now the reason I'm saying anticipating is because I've used the blower getting on a ladder and blowing off and it's freaking amazing. What we're gonna show you is a gutter attachment that I bought I have not used it in real life yet, but it's, I think, such a great safety addition to not have to be on the ladder to blow your toppers off. Uh, I wanted to get the news out as soon as I got this. Let's go take a look at it. We keep this box intentionally intact because it can easily hold all these tubes so they're not flying all over the place. This is the around the corner end. And it comes with four extension tubes, which should be more than enough length to go up and get the snow. This particular one is works. Um, fits on all sorts of different blowers. Uh, if this idea at all uh, intrigues you, you might want to make sure that you buy a blower maybe that actually lends itself to a kit 
that that particular company might uh, offer. This cheap $39 Ryobi that I bought didn't really offer a kit, so you can see that I have to have this adapter boot to adapt to the discharge so that it goes through the tubes. Now, this is the same problem here that I have with my pants. You'll notice that if this was Mark, and this was the belt on my pants, because I get bigger as you go up and smaller as I go down, this, this belt, when it was on there, would always fall off. It's kind of like the uh, reverse pear shape type of thing. What I did was, on the form factor that I'm working with, I took a radiator clamp and put it on here so that it's very tight and on the top and on the bottom I have something to grip with with this ring that goes around here to keep this on really good. Now what we discovered on the single speed one here, or excuse me, the double speed one, is it was a kind of a, a handy thing to have. We weren't really counting on it, but I can tell you that many, many times when I would wash my hair and I would have to dry it and get ready, and Sue would be getting ready, I just, I couldn't get my hair really that dry with this. And I discovered that this thing, on low of course, really really has been handy. And that's one of the reasons why we usually have this in the house. I left it, I left it installed here so you can see how we travel with it sometimes, but don't let it kid you, it's usually in the bathroom. Okay, so let's show you how easy this actually does go on. Once I have the radiator clamp on, I literally can just put this on and got kind of a ratcheting mechanism here Ooh, that nice? and you just kind of do this and you know sometimes it works easier than the other uh, kind of want to feel where my radiator clamps are and kind of feed it together so that thing isn't stabbing you in the arm while you're using it and then you do it until it kind of doesn't want to click anymore you can see it's on there pretty tight so these have to go on in a particular order here. Uh, we have the first piece that goes on. What's that easy clip on, huh? It's an easy clip on. And then I thought at first maybe I didn't have to screw all of these on, but when you put the maximum length on, this is the end piece, and a person could modify this if they didn't like that it took too much of a corner here after they used it. I suppose you could just whack this here. Maybe you could put an extension on. You know, I won't know that until I use this a few more times. Um, but it doesn't matter the orientation how you put this together because this collar right here, I wanted to show you, it rotates. So as you're using it, oh. you can rotate things around. Nice. So you don't have to get too worried about it. Now I want to warn you, I'm 68 years old, I had shoulder surgery here, and this one's telling me I'm going to need it you know, in a year or so. So I'm not exactly Mr. Uh, strong here. So if you see me working this thing, you can think two things. Either, wow, he doesn't have any strength and he can do it, or, wow, he's struggling with it. I'm certainly not going to do this. All right. So now that you know what you're going to try to be accomplishing, if you're getting one of these, you can actually look at blowers that have a form factor that include a strap in it so that it hangs on you properly. So I just have uh, some bungee cord straps. Just going to take the weight off so that I don't have to hold it. I'm going to turn it on, and then I'm going to see 
if I can negotiate with it. I'm going to have it on low so that I don't drive you guys nuts. So we'll see how this works. Gotta wait for fall first. Well, we actually, need some leaves. Actually, I don't want to see how it works. <laughs> this is one of those things that if you buy a really awesome snowblower, a lot of times you will not end up needing it. And that's one of the blessings of spending the money to buy something like this. It's kind of like an insurance policy. So uh, I'm sure there's plenty of folks out there that bought that 18 horsepower snowblower and get to use it for two years. If I bought this and invented this and I never have to use it, I'll be a happy man. And like I said, I use it for blowing my hair all the time, so I'm already happy with this purchase. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time with something more useful, hopefully.